Paradise Forever was formed with the intention of creating a support base for people entering into Islam. My life before Islam, uh, I can say it was very sporadic, um, not too much grounding, no roots. Uh, my, I live with my mother, and my mother, she, hasn't, she doesn't have strong religious background. I come from a Christian background. Because of my mother's and I lack of compatibility, um, I was actually had to live on the street for a couple months, where I was then found, um, and I was placed into foster care. I was in three different foster homes before the last one becoming my permanent home where I stayed for six years. Uh, during that time, I was completely alone. I had no mother, no father, no friends, nothing that I could hold on to. And I think that's what really opened the doors for me and why I had to start my search because I was alone. Um, my mother never really installed any firm roots, so I myself got involved. I guess you can say I was self-rooted in Christianity then, um, and I started attending a Pentecostal church. Um, so every Sunday I would look forward to going to church. I felt like it was my spiritual education that I was not getting from home. So every Sunday I would go and I would have questions to ask about who Jesus was um, because again we had like prayers and basic teachings from my mom like just basically a prayer before dinner and a prayer before bed but that's as far as it went so when my Sunday school teacher would tell me uh, about Jesus I got the classic egg theory um, can I say that okay um, the theory of the shell the yolk and the white, how the three compose an egg. If you take one away, you don't really have a whole egg. So that's how the Trinity was described with Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. So I acknowledged that, but I didn't, I still felt that there was something missing in that teaching. It wasn't until much later, uh, I was in high school actually, and uh, I started becoming more involved again with the church because my childhood. I was involved, but then I strayed out of the church. And as most young teens, they're involved with their friends and things like that. But I really f I questioned everything about life now. And then there was a, a boy, he was in my high school, and he was a Muslim. And so I wanted to try to explain to him more about Christianity. And he wanted to explain to me about Islam. So. I remember just uh, talking to him and he was denying certain things about Christianity and it really struck me like how could he say certain things uh, about Christianity so I said you know instead of me being pulled one way from someone's opinion I wanted to find my own opinion I didn't want to be led anymore by peers or by other influences so I started going to the library and researching more about what religion is, Islam, Christianity, all faiths. And um, that's where the doors started to open for me. What attracted me to Islam was the beauty in it. I hadn't been exposed to all the stereotypes or the, the media or the negative connotations. I, I haven't been exposed to that. So when I started reading these books about what Islam had to say, I, I got, I was confronted with myself from my childhood teachings, from my lifestyle at the time, which was basically just living your life uh, with no particular direction. And now this, Islam. And my soul I guess you can say came into uh, trauma. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't think, I couldn't, I couldn't 
live properly anymore what I knew what was proper I did I just nothing made sense anymore and I would stay up around the clock just trying to get my hands on anything that would talk about God to find out who he really was because up until this point I think it was just a name it wasn't alive he wasn't alive in my heart as yet and I remember just running outside late just crying out to whoever was there, this creator. And I was saying, please answer me. Answer me. Give, me. give me direction. Give me footing. Give me something that I can hold on to because I'm lost and I was desperate. I didn't want to live, but I knew I couldn't take my life because I knew that that was not something to do. But at the same time, I didn't, I didn't know which God to call on. Do I call on the God that they called in the Christian background? Do I call on the God in the Islamic background? Do I just drift as I've been drifting? Where do I call? So I called to this above the name, above the language, who this is. And I said, please just give me an answer. I need to know. I can't go on like this. And Alhamdulillah, I'll praise this for God. Uh, within the two days of me calling to my being, my creator, I, I received that answer. I was inside of my math class, my grade 11 math class, and I was reading a book, and something, everything that I had been rejecting about think, elements of the faith, it just, it, I, can't, I can't fully explain it, but it flooded in, and I believed I believed in everything and I had already learned the Shahada on my own just by reading books and I had learned about Muhammad, I had learned about things in Islam and all these things they came in and I was just overwhelmed. It was like, this is it, this is it. I like I found it and I my tear my eyes filled with tears and my heart just filled with this joy and I ran out of the classroom and my teacher was like Tanya, that's, which is my given name, Tanya, where are you going? And I couldn't even respond. I was just like, language wasn't even in my head. I didn't know how to talk even. It was just so overwhelming. And I ran to the washroom and I was like, I didn't even know what wudu was, but I was like flushing my face, trying to get clean, I, trying to do my own wudu, I guess. And I just said, this is it. I found it. And I ended up seeing a sister in my school at the time and she was wearing a hijab and I said to her are you a Muslim and she's like yes and I said I need to talk to you because I think I am a Muslim too so alhamdulillah I just went from there as she met me to her family with open arms and they just invited me in their house they would give me their clothes their books food everything it just showed me the hospitality and they drove me down to the masjid. It was here, Islamic Foundation, uh, Nugget. And I was, I was there and I took Shahada with the family that took me and a sister who was working inside the office and I made my Shahada. And la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Those words could barely come out of my mouth. I was so overwhelmed. So. My life has completely changed. I now, I have a belonging and it's, it's a deeper belonging. It's with my, with my mother, we, we had difference of opinions for so long about faith, about actually nationality, because I'm mixed. My mother's white and my father's black. And I wasn't raised with my father. So I was always questioning. Uh, people would ask me, where are you from? What's your background? And I didn't know what to say. I'm Canadian. I only know my mother's side, you know? Basically now, um, I belong. I have something to ground me. I have something to look forward to. Uh, I know now why I'm here and what I'm going to. I'm going to my creator. And it makes me want to learn. I, my past started off with that learning with that exploring and it is an ongoing process until God Allah commands that to stop but and I encourage everybody to continually 
strive for that inner peace. This feeling that I have inside of me, I want to share it with others. And sometimes some people are willing to uh, embrace that in Islam, in Islam. And even if it doesn't come through Islam, just our example to non-Muslims, we can show what we are all about. And alhamdulillah that my goal is to, is to share that little light that Allah has given me with others.